Hey, welcome in today as we visit with the Oriole pitching prospect Kyle Bradish, who came over in the trade in December of 19. Dylan Bundy was sent to the Angels. Four right-handers came to Baltimore, including Kyle. Had a heck of a year this year, beginning at uh, Bowie. Was only there a brief time and then promoted to Norfolk. Finished the year with a combined 3.68 ERA. Most people now have Kyle in the top 10 Oriole prospects list, which is great and just shows, Kyle, that uh, – you had a year that paid off for you, man. When you look back and took some time when it ended here a couple of weeks ago and reflected on your year, what did you like most? Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on, first off. Uh, but, yeah, this season, just looking back, uh, I had some hiccups. So throughout the season, it was kind of hit or hit, miss. But the overall season was – I couldn't have asked for anything better. Um, got uh, a nice taste of Triple A. Uh, for the majority of the year, um, got to face really good competition, meet some of the older guys up there and uh, see what it's all about. You know, there's nothing wrong with starting and ending big. And you did that. Uh, three scoreless at Bowie, which got you sent to Norfolk. And then I noted that the, at the end of the year, your last uh, four or five starts, well, four really, uh, really good. Uh, two earned runs, 20 innings, 24 strikeouts. Um, what was going right? at the end of the year? Was it just improvement you made? Were there some things that really came together for you late? Uh, just kind of everything came together. Uh, got comfortable uh, with both my pitch, both both my breaking balls. Uh, I was having a little little fight with my curveball um, here and there when I got a triple A, just the ball's a little different. Um, but yeah, change up was really working too. I focused on that for the second half of the season, getting comfortable with that, so yeah. Everything just came together and body, mind felt really good finishing out the year. You mentioned the ball is different, and sometimes we forget about that. But the minor league ball is used through double A, and the major league ball is used at triple A and above, correct? So you were experiencing things that were different with the baseball. Yeah, definitely. Uh, once you get up to triple A, they're supposed to be uh, major league balls. Um, and like just where you go uh, when we were in Memphis, we were using a Pacific League ball. It's just the there was a lot of variations of the Triple A ball throughout the year, which uh, made it a little difficult to stay consistent with your grips and stuff. That seems crazy to me that that would be true. Hopefully, baseball <laughs> yeah. looks into that as the year goes on. Now, Kyle, your velocity readings were better this year than you were given credit for, say in 2019. Is that true? Did you gain velocity over a couple years there? And if you did, how did how did you do it? Yeah, definitely. Uh, coming out of college, I think I was maybe hitting 96 at my max, um, but usually sitting in low 90s. And then in 2019, my first season with the Angels, uh, I was, I don't know what the deal was, but I was throwing slower than I was in college. Um, but coming over to Orioles, I got a uh, really good off-season program. And then with the COVID shutdown, uh, I just really hit the weight room hard and tried to clean up my mechanics a little bit, and it paid off. So you think weight room was the biggest factor, or was it one of just many? Uh, there was, yeah, multiple factors. Uh, but ha having that COVID shutdown kind of gave you an extra off-season um, so I just tried to run with that and get as much work in as possible. And then cleaning up mechanics uh, was another factor. So when you get a few extra ticks and they say you were comfortably mid nineties this year, is that sound accurate? Yeah. Uh, I think my average fastball was right at 95. So that's, that's above average and that's a nice velocity to work off of when you're a pitcher and you get those extra ticks, what does it mean to you? Is it confidence? Does it open up more, uh, you know, things you can do? I mean, how does it help you? Yeah, just throwing harder. Uh, you'll hear it from hitters. If a guy's throwing harder, it's harder to see everything else. Um, so, yeah, it gives you a little more confidence. If you fall behind an account uh, and you have a good fastball, you feel confident in throwing that uh, just to get a strike um, and you're not worried about having damage being done. You know, we've heard so much about the Oriole pitching program, the analytics, the data. You know, they've got some new young uh, pitching coaches who are who are really solid. How would you describe it? What are some of the 
tenets of this program? What are some of the basics that that they want you to do? Uh, I think a big thing with why you're seeing the success with the uh, younger pitchers is just kind of the overall communication and teamwork throughout the org uh, from the top down. Uh, Holti does a really good job uh, communicating with the pitchers as well as the pitching coaches throughout the organization. Um, but yeah, just, I think the big thing with us is they like us to do what we do and do it often. Um, so they're not trying to change what you do. Um, I know I'm a little different the way I throw just from over the top and my fastball has a little, has a little cut to it. Um, but they embraced that when I came over, uh, which gave me a confidence boost. And they told me to go out and do me, basically. And it's worked out pretty well for you. I wanted to ask you about <laughs> the over the top, because when you watch highlights of your, your pitching, that's just not an arm slot you see very often in the game this year. Long time Oriole fans will remember Jim Palmer coming straight over the top. And that's a great name to be linked to, by the way, Kyle, <laughs> in, any, in any sense, if you're a pitcher. Um, yeah. But have you always thrown that way uh, over the top? How did you come to that? Yeah, my arm slot's kind of always been over the top like that. Um, I think it goes back to me playing football quarterback when I was younger. Um, and then, just, I don't know, that's just how it is. Uh, made a little, some tweaks in college and uh, kind of took off from there. And they as say, you're, some of your coaches, it gives you some natural – cutting action which isn't a bad thing either a little late movement yep so yeah late that, movement's that always, always been good true? that's always been true of your fastball too yeah and then in college I kind of uh figured out that it was cutting so I got to play around with that and uh, try to manipulate it very good so tell me about your secondary pitches this year was one or two better than the others what were some things you did to work on them uh, yeah, so I throw a curveball and a slider and a changeup. Um, changeup's new, uh, but curveball and slider are definitely my go-tos. Slider uh, was definitely more of a consistent pitch for me this year. Um, usually I'm a, more of a fastball curveball, just uh, from the over the top and the um, tunneling I get from those two. Uh, but like I said earlier, my curveball, I was – what is it? Uh, wasn't really working for me um, that consistent up in AAA. So slider definitely was a go-to one for me this year. It's a big winner for you. You're Rule 5 eligible for the first time. I think we'd all be shocked if you're not out to that 40-man roster in a couple weeks. And if that does happen for you, uh, have you allowed yourself to think ahead a few weeks to what, how special that could be and how neat that would be for you? Yeah, no, that'd be awesome. Um, I'm hoping that does come true. This uh, system has been great to me. So yeah, hopefully I'll get added to that. But yeah, just it's an honor to be added to it. And that just makes you even want to work even harder. So what will the winter look like for you baseball wise? Baseball wise, uh, I started up my offseason workouts last week. Um, and then I'll pick up uh, a baseball starting next week to get my throwing going. Um, but yeah, just get into some long toss a little later in the year and then start up some bullpens uh, probably early January. And you're in Arizona, a great place to be because of the weather. So many good players are there. How does that benefit you? Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I don't really have to worry about going out and throwing in freezing cold snow. It, it, I'd be surprised if I go out there and throw in anything less than 50. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a added bonus and living in Arizona, um, being able to play catch outside uh, year round. And then with the players out here, uh, get to do live ABs with uh, professional hitters and a lot of good MLB hitters. So name drop a second. Who are some guys you might see in your workouts this winter? Oh, um, interesting. Uh, we had a few new guys coming in to push. Uh, Zach Plesak, um, Sean Doolittle's there, uh, a few other guys. Drew Smiley's uh, in the World Series right now, actually. Um, he'll be in there. 
and then just a lot of higher level higher level minor leaguers. A lot of help uh, players helping players during these workouts, picking brains and picking up something that you might not have even thought of asking and it comes up, that kind of thing. Oh, absolutely. And just hearing the way they talk with each other, because I mean, most of them know each other from playing in the big league. So the way they talk to each other and go about their business, it's, it's awesome to watch. Before we wrap it up, Kyle, tell me what it's been like being in the Oral organization since the trade. And, you know, when I went around to minor league teams this year and I did not get to Norfolk, but I went to mo to many of them, you know, I just saw a real camaraderie and a chemistry and, you know, you guys are kind of a together bunch on the farm. Did you experience that? What was it like for you this year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, this being my first season with the Orioles, really uh, being able to make some good connections and good friends uh, and just knowing that it's just the beginning for us. It's, it was really good. Um, just thinking about what it's going to be like in a couple of years in the big leagues with these guys, it's going to be really fun. And for you, that could happen next year. That must be incredibly exciting when you think what could be. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourselves, but that path that you wanted to create, you've created. Yeah, definitely. Well, Kyle, great to talk with you today, man. Congrats on a good year, and uh, we look forward to uh, seeing you next season. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Steve.